Welcome to the new River City Gamers Podcast, hosted by SCXCR and Well Unreal 007, as well as many other members from the River City Gamers website. Stay tuned for all the gaming news, new pickups, and everything else we feel like talking about on the River City Gamers Podcast. Hello, welcome to River City Game Podcast. I'm Miss CXCR. I'm Blanga Gamer. I'm Midnight Man. And the reason I call it River City Game is because we have game news. I thought we had chocolate chip cookies, but okay. No! The gaming news! So real! Oh, I have to start off with this just because it amuses me so much. You familiar with a game called Dark Matter? Uh, I've never heard of that. Maybe? What was it again? Uh, it's one of those Metroidvania-style games. Uh, it was on Kickstarter earlier this year, but the Kickstarter didn't succeed. But oh. then uh, the company went ahead and pushed the game out anyway. And, um, well... Some people bought it, and let's just put it this way. It's been pulled from Steam. Oh, I think I might know what you're talking about. Yeah, you might have seen videos of some people playing this before, where they got to a certain point in the game, went through a door, and it just abruptly ended. Yes, I know what you're talking about. And not only that, it said to be continued, even though there were no plans to make any sort of sequel or follow-up or any of that. Well, apparently yeah. what happened was, after the Kickstarter failed, a bunch of people uh, in the development house got laid off. And they just pushed the game out anyway. Pretty much. Uh, according to reports, the uh, company that made it, which is Iceberg Interactive, they called them a, quote, sleeping company. In that they only had, like, a bare minimum of uh, management people left at the studio, and... With the amount of developers that was left, uh, there was no way they'd be able to, like, start and finish any sort of titles. So it's like a skeleton crew, except you call it sleeping. Yeah, there is good news, I guess. Which is, uh, there is going to be an ending for the game, but it's going to be developed by an external company. So they have to outsource the ending to other people? Yes. Okay then, well, now we know what happens to games that don't reach their Kickstarter. Kickstarter is such a weird thing anyway, because you're basically paying for something that doesn't exist yet, and just kind of hoping that the end product meets your expectations. Well, almost all the things I've pledged for seem to meet my expectations, or would hopefully do. Will hopefully do? I are good at talking. Let's move on. There's a couple different directions I could go with this. Do we talk about another sort of failed development house, or... You know what, let's just stay with that theme. Okay. Remember the right. Bureau? Yeah, that was like... Supposedly gonna be the new XCOM game, but they kinda made it... Well, they sorta made it its own thing, but... It's still technically an XCOM spin-off. Spin -off, I don't know. But yeah, what about it? Well, after the Bureau XCOM Declassified didn't really mean expectations, a bunch of people at the studio got laid off. Wouldn't be ever City Gamers podcast if we didn't say people who got laid off. I need to go back to our other podcast and do like some sort of statistical breakdown of how many stories we do that are just about people getting fired, or laid off, or otherwise losing their jobs, because it seems to happen a lot. Well, it's this a drinking, is this a drinking game kind of thing? Oh god, no, no! <laughs> no, we don't want to give our listeners alcohol poisoning. That's a worse idea than when I did the crappy pasta drinking game. Yeah, and you ran out of Gatorade. Yeah, I ran out of drinks! <laughs> but well, next, 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 time, next time bring a six pack or something. 2K Marin, focus. <laughs> But yeah, but, uh, not only have a bunch of people been laid off, 
People have said that the entire studio is basically done. Yeah, I mean, after that game went through development hell of, like, of the backlash it got, and, you know, it, it obviously was trying to... It was obviously struggling to try to be its own thing while at the same time still try to tie in with XCOM. But of course at the same time not piss off all the XCOM fans, which they kind of did with the initial game they were originally going with, which was that first person uh, shooter thing. So yeah, this is not really surprising considering that when they finally released the game it, it was just sort of meh and then yeah. Yeah, I can only imagine how much it would cost to try going one particular direction with your game, and then, even though it was still kind of a shooter, basically trying to rethink the entire direction and design of the game in order to fit what you're trying to do then. And even then, it, w it was just basically a Mass Effect ripoff. I'll take from your word I... for that, because I haven't actually played Mass Effect yet. Well, I have, and just from what I've seen of it, yeah. And plus, you have, like, XCOM enemy unknown anyway, so there was really, like, not much of a point to this game, even getting this game, when you have a much better new XCOM game to begin with. So yeah, they were kind of doomed from the start. Speaking of things that are doomed, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ubisoft Hour. Oh boy. Uh, think back on some games that Ubisoft has recently released. By the way, is it Ubisoft or Ubisoft? I keep mixing them up. Uh... I tend to go with Ubisoft, because it sounds more French, so I just go with that. Ubisoft. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll do the other way, just to be different. Ubisoft. Can you think of some Ubisoft games that have been released recently? Um, Rayman Legends? That's what I'm looking for. Uh... Oh, Did the... Assassin's Creed come out uh, recently, or no? I don't, I don't That's think still not out yet. It'll probably be out by yet. the time this podcast goes up, though. I honestly can't think of anything else they... Not a white really list, me. but a... Oh, Splinter Cell? Blacklist, yes. Oh. Now, what do those two titles have in common? Um... They didn't sell that well, as they hoped. Yes! Ubisoft says that both Splinter Cell Blacklist and Rayman Legends did not perform up to their expectations. Well, Although, Rayman, with Le Rayman Legends, Le you can't be that surprised by it because they pushed it back so far that it partially coincided with the release of Grand Theft Auto V. Eh, what do you expect? GTA is more popular. Yeah, well, I expect Ubisoft to not constantly screw over Rayman. That's what I would want. want when but... was Rayman Legends originally going to come out when it was still just a Wii U exclusive? Back in February, I think. <laughs> Oh, wow. And as for Splinter Cell, I mean, I never played the games, but I think they were kind of making it more, a little bit more action to begin with, so some fans may not have been pleased with it or interested in it, so whatever. Yeah, I, I remember looking at the demo of this when it was shown off in the Microsoft conference, and, um, God, I am blanking on the character's name. Sam Fisher. Hmm. He's like running across fields and like doing action movie style takedowns on people and I'm thinking look at all this stealth do a side side comparison with that game in like the first Splinter Cell or something yeah. uh, I need That'd to finish funny. the first Splinter Cell now that I think about it I still haven't well, done I mean, that I was never a big Splinter Cell fan to be honest well I haven't even played any of the games so yeah I kinda, I'm more of a Metal Gear guy kind of guy but that's off topic now, do you think I've done enough bad news about Ubisoft? Bad news about big com big game companies? No, continue. Good, because that's the next story, too. The Ubisoft hour rolls on. Although, this is probably only going to be like 20 minutes at most. Yeah, I was going to say, hopefully this is not going to be an actual hour long. No, Ubisoft. no. <laughs> I could probably dig up enough stuff to make it an hour, but no, let's just cover this. Now, what's another upcoming Ubisoft title? Not not Assassin's Creed 4. Watch Dogs? Call of Duty. Yes. What? Call of Duty? What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, Watch Dogs is what I'm thinking about. And... It's delayed. Yeah. Damn it. Until next year. I'm not looking forward to that one. Until 
beginning of next year, you said? Yes. Well, Which, that creates a bit of a problem because there are Watchdog bundles for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Yeah, I bet GameStop and other retailers are probably a little peeved about that. Well, there is actually one retailer who has uh, put out a message about what they're going to do to handle this, and that's Amazon. And they said that they're going to adjust the orders for people who ordered the Watchdog bundles with the PS4. I assume they're doing it with the Xbox One too, although I haven't actually seen that yet. So you're, they're still going to ship out the actual console, but it won't have the game included. I don't know if they're just going to hold the reservation on the game until it comes out, or have something else that comes with it yet, but at least the consoles are still going out. Target, Best Buy, GameStop, Walmart, anything else, I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. You might just be screwed. Well, at least there's one good thing out of that. Which is? Which, you know, the people still get the consoles. Well, the Amazon, uh, the Amazon buyers, at least. Yeah, and then, you know, while it, it always sucks that we have to wait longer for uh, a anticipated game, at least we know that it's being delayed for a reason, and that they, you know, they want to make sure it's at peak performance. So, there's that, at least, too. Yeah, at least... They're not going to end up tweeting about all the tens of thousands of cram dinners that they're having for their development staff. Speaking of Microsoft... Oh, wait, wait no, wait, it's wait. not... It's technically Microsoft, but it's still Ubisoft, so the hour rolls on. Uh, they've started showing a couple more titles that have had to do with their Kinect peripheral in particular. And have you heard of Fighter Within? The hell is that? It's a Kinect-controlled fighting game that's going to come out for the Xbox One. You know what? Okay. I'm actually going to link the video to it in the chat for you. Take a moment, watch the video, and then tell me what you think. I can't watch the video because it'll change the window for me. I'm trying to record this with Fraps, remember? Oh, right. Okay, Nightman, you do it. All right. And remember, this is supposed to control with the Kinect. This, uh... Huh. I doubt it will control well. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know how they're going to handle, like, Capro Ira style breakdance fighting with Kinect controls. Much less the parts where the characters leap off of parts of the environments and then, like, tornado DDT people. Yeah, I'm kind of wonder how the hell will that work, too. Like... My worst sure. fear with this is that it's going to control like Hulk Hogan's main event did on Kinect. <laughs> where, in order to do a running elbow drop on someone, you simply held up your arm so that your elbow was pointing toward the Kinect. Let's either that or just flail around. Hope, hope, you hope you actually win. So instead of button mash, Gene, is you just flail around. You know, I think I'll stick with Tekken and Mortal Kombat. Thank you. You rather stick with actual fighting games? Yeah. Then it's going to end. It's exactly like Dane Cook said. It's going to end up like Eddie Gordo from Tekken when you don't know the moves and you're just mashing buttons. Oh, geez. but I'm not saying that fighting games can't work on Kinect. If you have something that's just like a brawling game or like a boxing game that could potentially work but for hey. something like this no and another point I want to make too how athletic is your average gamer is that a trick question possibly you know, it's probably a trick question to the Microsoft PR guys who thinks thinks we all want to play connect I'm just thinking, well, if, anyone, like natural. if this controls anything like people are imagining it does, then people are going to be absolutely worn out after one fight. No, I, I doubt they wouldn't be able to, like, dive kick in their living rooms to do this stuff, and besides, that could, they could probably break shit if they tried to do stuff like that anyway. Well, if you had this game at, like, 
a gym of some sort and you were doing this on a softly padded mat of some sort and you had a ready stream of Gatorade going directly into your veins you could probably get a good 20 minutes out of this just stick it directly into my veins uh, you know I'll, I'll not go too in depth on this one but guess which country in the world has video games as a 2.3 billion dollar industry uh Japan no is it a country that usually gives us bootleg boot consoles? No. Don't overthink this. United States? Close. Canada? Yes. Oh. Yeah, not only that, there are 329 uh, game development studios in Canada, and more than three quarters of them are domestically owned and operated. So... Good on you, Canada. Okay, I'll take that. So, how many development? How many development studios you said there were? Like three hundred or something? Yeah, over three hundred. I have a hard time naming three, to be honest. But that's that's cool. Well, there are a lot of them that can be just like small time or independent development studios, like those yeah. guys doing River City Ransom Underground right now. Yeah, there's also like uh, Drinkbox Studios, which uh, made. Uh, Guacamole. They're actually from Toronto. And then, of course, you got the big companies like uh, BioWare and uh, the Montreal studios from like Ubisoft and Inidos. So, yeah, we definitely have our place. And I would say Silicon Knights, but, well, they pretty much fell through. Yeah, not point. so much. Yeah. But still, Terra Darkness is a great game, so it was made in Canada. Uh, that about does it for the news. I have other stuff I can mention, but quite frankly, it's topics that have been drilled into the ground repeatedly. So I'm just going to skip over those. By the way, Xbox One has hardware problems. Moving on. Gee, what a surprise. Yeah, like, we haven't heard that enough from Foffy in the Skype chat. Yes. Hi, Foffy, if you ever listen to this podcast. We still want to have you as a guest sometime. Though right now, we have to cover... What is going to come out relatively soon? And the very first thing that I see is a massive clusterfuck on October 29th. Yep, October and November are usually when a whole lot of games come out, so... On this date in particular, though, you have WWE 2K14. I'm still pissed that they have The Rock on the cover, even though he's not done jack shit for the company in months. I think he said that before on a previous... It bears okay. repeating. Okay. You also have Battlefield 4 coming out that day. Which, by the way, in the past week or so, I've been seeing so many commercials for Battlefield 4. Oh, yeah, that's marketing. Yeah. Especially on ESPN. Yeah, that's a little weird, but whatever. That reminds me, um, ESPN had an interview with LeBron James where he said that he's a gamer and that his favorite games are Madden and Call of Duty. LeBron James confirmed for fucking casual. <laughs> but the third game that's coming out that day, Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah. That's my I feelings feel on it. Well, I still have yet to even play any of the Assassin's Creed games, but they always looked interesting enough, so I might eventually get them. Plus four has like pirates and you can explore on a boat and stuff. So, I'm um, I'm looking forward to playing it, even though they come out every year. They're at least enjoyable. Oh, actually, there's another game that's coming out on the 29th. I almost forgot to mention this, but Sonic Lost World. Oh yeah. That one actually looks pretty good. Yeah, I still don't know if I'm gonna get that or not. I don't have a Wii U, so I probably can't. Well, it's on 3DS too, isn't it? Is it? Hmm. I think it is. Pretty sure it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on, let me confirm that. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Alright, the other game that I've been seeing a crap ton of commercials for, Call of Duty Ghosts. Don't care. Yeah, I don't really care either. I care about it less than even Battlefield at this point. Oh, jeez. 
it might just be because be because I'm watching ESPN, but I've seen Battlefield and Call of Duty commercials back to back several times. Yeah, I mean, so that tells you what kind of audience they're trying to appeal to. Yeah, man, the bro the Broskis can't just play Madden all the time, right? And in another game that I'm going to bet that none of us give a shit about, Need for Speed Rivals. I don't play that shit. We yeah, uh, we don't play a yearly release Need for Speed game, so. Would you play XCOM Enemy Within? Uh, wait, is that a new one or? That's the expansion to Enemy Unknown. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I still have yet to play Enemy Unknown, so. Yeah, same. That's on my list of games that I need to buy when I can, you know, afford the that. Oh, yeah, we all have a long list of that. Oh, by the way, even though Watch Dogs has been delayed, you can still get the official strategy guide. Oh boy, now you, you can memorize how you how to beat game before you get it. Like, like Speedrunners, get on that. Yeah. Always good to get a head start. You know, I'll just end this with a 3DS title. How's that sound? Okay, what's going All on right. with 3DS? Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Oh yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much New Zelda, even though it's kind of in the vein of like A Link to the Past, but pretty much a new thing to begin with. Yeah, plus I, I kind of like the concepts they put in, into it. Although I still have yet to get uh, the Ocarina of Time 3D on my 3DS, but I can look forward to that too. Well, actually, with uh, this new Zelda, there's a promotion going on where you can get a DLC code for Oracle of Seasons. Oh, on the 3DS Virtual Console? Mm-hmm. Well, I already have a physical copy of that game, but cool. That's nice. Yeah, good to know. And... Technically, this is still a ways off, but Gran Turismo 6. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Well, if you like cars, racing. Some people might be interested, some aren't. I'm looking I mean, played... forward more to the Gran Turismo movie than the Gran Turismo 6 game. <laughs> yeah, I still can't believe they're making that into a movie. You just want to find out what the hell they're even going to do with that, aren't is that like the only reason why you want to see it? No, I'm just looking forward to Gran Turismo 6 that little. Well. I mean, well, I've already seen what they're doing with the Need for Speed movie. It's pretty much exactly what I expected. Mm hmm. I'd be more interested in Gran Turismo than Need for Speed, though. I mean, at least Gran Turismo doesn't come out every year. You know, let's shift the discussion from this game slash movie that isn't out yet. And talk about things that we bought recently. And I don't have a three-sided coin to flip, so Blondie, you go first. Okay. Uh, I actually have made a pretty significant purchase uh, since the last podcast. And that is, I now have a Wii U. <gasps> okay, I don't even know what noise that was, but thanks. Oh, the gap. Oh. <laughs> As done okay. by a zombie. Okay, uh, so yeah, I have a Wii U, and it was the, uh, the Wind Waker bundle that, uh, just came out recently, so, so in addition to, uh, a deluxe Wii, Wii U, uh, even though they pretty much stopped the basic model, uh, it comes with, uh, a Zelda-themed, uh, gamepad, which has, you know, the Hyrulean glyphics and stuff on it. It also comes with a download of Wind Waker HD, and uh, and as someone who really enjoyed it on the GameCube, uh, I like this version. Um, it also actually comes with a free download of a digital copy of the Hyrule Historia, which even though I already actually have a physical copy of, is still nice if you want to at least check that out if you don't have the actual book. Uh, in terms of other games I've actually gotten for the Wii U so far. Um, I've gotten Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, you know, of course, so I can actually play with you guys online again. And that. And, uh, appropriately, since we talked about this in Ubisoft earlier, Rayman Legends. 
and I also downloaded a few things on the Wii U on the Wii U's virtual console, Earthbound, and the Wii U and in other Wii U downloads I downloaded DuckTales Remastered and and recently because it was actually on sale for only eight dollars trying to a director's cut which is pretty nice because originally it was like twenty dollars on the Wii U shop uh, in terms of like other games I've also gotten before and after getting the Wii U um, on the Game Boy I got Double Dragon I figured why not with that and on the NES well, since the new Strider game's coming out, and I am going to review a Strider game eventually, uh, Strider on the NES. Which is a... Mm. It's a pretty janky version of Strider, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the PlayStation, I picked up Wipeout 3. And on the 360, I, I finally found a copy of uh, the first View of Pinata. And in a drugstore bin of all things, I found uh, copies of Halo Wars, so I now have a copy of that. And you can obviously expect a Black Sea Game Review for that game sometime in the future. And finally, actually just tonight, uh, as of this uh, podcast, I got Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate HD on the Xbox Live Arcade. Even though I have played through the 3DS version, uh, this is pretty much a better version, and that way if I ever wanted to, you know, maybe someday record it for whatever video purposes. Plus, you know, it's on my TV in HD. And, uh, that's about it, I think. Well then. Nightman. Alright. Okay. As for consoles, uh, well, I'm pretty sure this is no surprise because a lot of people forgot this already, but, uh, GTA 5. And, uh, I'm pretty late to the party on this one, but, uh, my brother was the one who really bought this, but, uh, got Skyward Sword. Oh, don't worry, I've bought games that were, like, that I've gotten, like, years after it was re originally released, so that's not that late compared to the party compared to some of the games we've gotten. <laughs> True. And for uh, 3DS, this one's got to be pretty obvious for those who have a 3DS. Pokemon X. H ironically enough, I just beat the game too, like today. How long have you had that game for? Uh, about a week and a half. Oh, well, yeah, that's uh, not too bad. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people have actually beaten the game in like a week or so, including Zero. Yeah. And, oh. for, and for Steam, uh... I got a pretty old game called Sid Meier's Pirates. It was on a talk. They had a sale on the, for that on a talk like a pirate day, so that's why I decided to get that. And last but definitely not least, Dust and Elysian Tale. That was also on sale like a couple of like I think it was last week. Oh yeah, I have that game on Xbox Live Arcade. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I might review it. Well, you can talk about it on the updates. Yeah. I still want to at least try that game out. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good hack and slash Metrovania. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. Oh, by the way, you said you had GTA 5? Yeah. Did you qualify for that thing that Rockstar was doing where, because of the online problems, they were giving out money? Uh, I don't think so. I didn't have any uh, big issues with it anyway. Uh, when you say money, do you mean in-game money or...? Yeah, in-game money. Yeah, let's not confuse people that... I haven't played it. It's like Rockstar giving out money. Well, I'm sure they made billions of dollars on the game. But... And was that it? Yeah, that was it. Oh, okay. Well, at first I wasn't going to have a lot to say for this one, but uh, then I was cruising around eBay and I bought a lot of PS2 games. Not a lot as in several, a lot as in like a collection of games. And there are six of them, and I paid $20 for this. I got it for some more than others. I got Final Fantasy X. Didn't really care about mm. that one. <laughs> I got Virtual Fighter 4. 
Eh, kind of cared about that one. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. Kind of care about that one. Devil May Cry 3. Kind of indifferent to the whole series. Bloody oh, War 3, three because I don't have enough copies of that. <laughs> Are you just collecting copies of that game? How? Mm, moving on. And, uh... <laughs> The actual reason that I went for this lot was because it had some of those other games in it, but it also had Guilty Gear X. Yeah, I, I actually do kind of like the Guilty Gear series, but it's one of those things where I kind of like it vicariously through other people because I haven't actually had any of the games. But then earlier this year I got the first Guilty Gear and now I'm working my way up. And that about does it for me, so let's go right into our discussion, which is actually based off of this news story coming out of Japan, where they have officially ceased production of the Nintendo Wii. Uh, well, I think it had a good run. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, just purely from a sales standpoint, it was lightning in a bottle. Oh, yeah. Hopefully the Wii U could catch up a little bit with that, but that's, sort of, that's something different. Yeah, there's still time. Actually... With the new bundles that they were doing, sales went up by like 200% for the console in North America. Yeah. yeah good to hear. I, can't uh, remember, yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't remember if that was North America or worldwide, but it went up somewhere. Well, yeah, I mean, I can attest with that getting, getting one myself, so... But anyway, but with they, the Wii... Yeah, it had a good seven-year run. And with it going on its way out, I just figured I'd open the floor to you guys and say, what are some of your best Wii memories? Uh... Well, I got my Wii back in, uh, I think it was around, like, February 2007, so it wasn't too long after it originally launched, although I remember <laughs> trying to get it around Christmas, and, of course, back then it was, like, almost impossible. Like, the thing was, like, so popular that it was, like, it was, it was really that, that hard to get, get a console, that console that back then. But, uh, eventually, yeah, uh, back in February 2007, I did get it, and, uh, I remember getting Twilight Princess, Excite Truck, Red Steel, well, I mean, and, not, and while some games were obviously better than others back then, uh, I still had a lot of fun with it. In terms of, like, a Nintendo console, it's Nintendo games I really enjoyed, uh, you know, there's a bunch that I enjoyed. I liked Super Mario Galaxy, Super Super Paper Mario, Smash Brothers Brawl, of course, is a big one. The Zeldas, even uh, Metro Prime 3, even other M in some aspects I liked. No More Heroes was another was another big one early on. It's a great game, by the way. Yeah, but I mean, we could list off a ton of games that we all enjoyed. Mad World, uh, the Project Rainfall games that we eventually got, uh, Conduit. Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, I'm just listing off games I should stop. But, uh, yeah, there were a lot of good games that came up for it, obviously, and uh, we all enjoyed playing them, and even a few that we enjoyed playing together online, like Monster Hunter Try was big, big one for us. Oh, lots of memories with that. Yeah, we, we've literally put hundreds of hours into that. First time we ever took down Altrion? <laughs> oh, yeah, sheesh. Of course... That's no longer online, but, you know, now we got all three ultimate for that, at least. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a big one, and that introduced most of us to the, to the Monster Hunter series to begin with, so... Well... Now, now there wasn't... Now, suffice to say, uh, of course, this is pretty much our own vindictives here, but there, there were some games that weren't the best, like... I like with with me it's probably like with me there's games like House of Judgment and Soul Carpet Legends which I covered in my videos and you know I liked how they at least try to bring something from their franchises to the Wii I mean in some cases like the Resident Evil uh, Umbrella Chronicles spin-offs of series on the on the Wii can work and Dead Space Extraction and stuff like that but then you had Soul Calibur Legends and Casimir Judgment, which 
didn't quite work, but that's really more, more fault of the games themselves, not the Wii, obviously. Because, you know, the idea the ideas behind them weren't bad, it's just they weren't executed well, obviously. Uh, if I could interject for a moment. Yeah, go ahead. Can I? Okay. Yeah, sure. The thing is, though, even if you have, like, really bad games, depend depending on, like, how you experience them or the people you experience them with, you can have some really awesome memories with them. Like, for instance, Game Party is terrible. Oh, yeah, I mean... But when we were playing that at Unreal's house after Kineticon... jeez. Oh, all the weird shit that we got the game to do... Yeah, it was almost a so bad it was... It was fun in its own way. No, like I still playing the, still playing the darts game and getting a dart to go above the board and shoot off into space. Yeah. Although that whole series is just bad to begin with. Or like the basketball shooting game where I was just spamming basketballs and filled almost the entire screen with it. Yeah. You know, there's uh, actually there's actually one for the Wii U and it's probably like the worst out of the entire series from what I've heard, which is saying something. But anyway, go ahead, Nightman. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, about some of my fond, me fond memories of the Wii. But, uh, pretty much like when the thing first came out, like you said, it was pretty much impossible to get when it first came out, but I, I remember, like, uh, me and my brother were kinda trying hard just to get the damn thing, and we actually got it, like, the second week it was out, so victory right there, but I remember playing games like uh, like Twilight Princess and Red Steel, which I kind of didn't like and was pretty disappointed with. But whatever the case. Well, they did make that. a they did make Red Steel 2, which is pretty much completely different, but the execution behind yeah. it is actually better. Yeah, yeah, I heard that that it was a a better sequel. I, I will say that there were uh, games that looked interesting. Some worked, some didn't. Like we already covered, but uh. But I will say my my favorite games on there would have to be the No More Heroes games because you know they were funny, they were they were badass, and overall they were just well made games. And and uh, you know it's pretty much a series I wish uh, wish it would make more of, but it'd be kind of weird playing on a newer console anyway. Well, they did actually release uh, No More Heroes on like PS3. Yeah, I know. But yeah, so I know I, what you, I know what you mean. I think the thing about no, no More Heroes, the series, is that they used motion controls, but they didn't use them excessively. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's why it worked. Yeah, that's that's another big thing with the Wii was the motion controls. I mean, well, everyone had Wii Sports, and that pretty much like got everyone to play it, pretty much, including your family members. Which, yeah. which was obviously N Nintendo marketed for, and it worked greatly in their favor. You, you just reminded me of when I actually got the Wii for Christmas, and uh, obviously it was it came with Wii Sports, so uh, I unboxed it, set that up, and it was the last time that, uh, actually it's like the only time that I can remember that my entire family was playing games with me, like me, my older brother, and my mom and dad. And of course, we were just screwing around, we didn't really know what we were doing. For the bowling games, I was messing around with the motion controls, like, bowling overhand like I was throwing baseball pitches. <laughs> and I somehow got a ball to go into the opposite lane. Nice. I remember, uh, I actually kind of remember my aunt was uh, playing Wii Sports once, and she got a little too excited over getting a, getting a strike. It was pretty funny. Let's not forget people getting overexcited when just using the Wiimotes in general, and they threw at their TVs, and Nintendo's just like, yeah, we need to actually put, like, pads over the over the controllers now. Am I the only we... one that, like, never needed the wrist strap? Uh... I used to use the strap, but not anymore. Because, uh, well, a lot of the games I play are not actually not that motion control intensive. Like... Yeah... I mean, there are games like Muramasa, which don't use any motion controls. Yeah, and that still is a great game. Uh, yeah, and then just, but then you have stuff like uh, uh, Dead Space Extraction and the Resident Evil uh, rail shooters, which... Oh, and House of the Dead Overkill. So you had to, you had to 
quite a few good uh, rail shooters on the Wii as well. Yeah, which... I dug uh, I dug in Rail Chronicles. Yeah, it yeah rail shooters and first person shooters worked uh, pretty well on the Wii, considering that uh, you can aim pretty uh, well in those with the pointers. Actually, I just remembered like my biggest memory of the Wii, and it was before I actually got one. It was uh, it was back in November when the Wii still hadn't released yet. It was actually the day before the release, and one of my friends decided he was going to get a Wii the first day. Hmm. But the day before the Wii came out was this huge college football game between Ohio State and Michigan. It's a rivalry that's been going back for decades and decades. And so anyway, he was going to that game. So he calls me and says, I have a job for you. <laughs> Which is always a great way to start a conversation. But he asked me to uh, go to the local Target uh, in Columbus and basically get a spot for him. So I head down there around, I think it was like, 6.30, 7 o'clock that I went down there. And um, from my vantage point, I could actually see where the football stadium was that the game was taking place in. And because it was such a huge rivalry game, of course, traffic was absolutely awful. So I got there kind of late. I wound up like 20 people back. And I'm just holding casual conversations with the people in front of me in line. And every once in a while, because the football game is still going on, I'll hear these loud-ass cheers coming from the football stadium. So, we have this guy that would actually come back to the lines and tell us, you know, the score is this, the quarter is this. Like, what was going on in the football game? That's how huge the game was. Because it wound up deciding who would go to the national championship game, too. I should have mentioned that earlier. But, so, time goes on, the football game is wrapping up, and Ohio State wins. And shortly after, like, the game ends, I get a phone call from my friend, and I, all I can hear is really loud cheering. And I'm like, hello? Hello, are you there? And it takes a moment to respond, but eventually I hear this. I'm on the field! I'll be right there! He had rushed the field with a bunch of fans. And I didn't realize it until he got there, and I... Well, actually, shortly before he got there, I saw people who were walking away from the stadium coming towards us to go back to their cars, and they had chunks of grass in their hands. And this one dude actually took a long strip of grass and made a mohawk out of it. They were tearing up the field. And sure enough, here comes my friend with this, like, soccer ball-sized chunk of grass, and he goes, The game was awesome, man. And I'm like, really? That that was get in line. <laughs> Only you would t would have a story involving just waiting for a week for a friend to have like a huge sports story. So, do you guys remember those uh, commercials for the Wii, but like back before it came out? Yeah, everyone did. Yeah. They like to play. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, I love those. But I always imagined what would happen if they tried doing one of those to. Uh, show off some of their more mature games. Like, just some what? deadbeat looking what? guy answers the door and sees Miyamoto and the other guy there. Wait, was it Miyamoto and uh, Iwata in the commercial? Or... I don't know I if it was them. It might have just been like two random Japanese guys from what I remember. Yeah. I, I don't think it was Miyamoto and Iwata. I could look this up right now, but I'm not going to because my plugins crashed. <laughs> and, um, I always imagine like them going up to this like rundown house of some deadbeat guy and they go we would like to play and the guy just pulls out a gun shoots both of them in the head and steals the console <laughs> that would never ever make it to tv but just an interesting thought dark commercial is dark or if they like showed off something like mad world oh yeah, yeah that's kind of or Mad World, or Manhunt, or any of the other more mature games that were on the system. Mad World was actually one of the games that utilized those controls very well. 
Oh yeah, I loved Mad World. Uh, plus, plus, it had a great soundtrack too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and other games that. Yeah, I've memorized like what pimping. Other games I I like the motion controls for were uh, Zack and Wiki and uh, WarioWare. Those were fun and actually pretty innovative in like what ways you could do. Although of course the motion controls weren't always perfect. Like sometimes they had to get like be like try and get it just right. But you know it was it was still motion controls were still kind of its in its infancy back then. So oh, but uh. Let's, see, let's not forget one of your favorite Wii games, uh, Escape from Bug Island. Define favorite. So your favorite game to speedrun? No, my favorite game to speedrun is Ninja Breadman because it's really fucking short. Yeah, oh. Yeah, that's another thing with the Wii. Uh, because of the huge casual market it got, because it was advertising towards family with Wii Sports and that, it got a lot and a lot of shovelware. Not just there was shovelware of the shovelware. Exactly, which yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it really hampered the Wii's reputation that much, but it was pretty rampant. No, it it did. Yeah. It did. yeah. Well, it's a good thing we mentioned all the really good games first. Uh, I'll just keep mentioning even more, trying to balance it even more, like Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. Uh, but yeah, the shovelware, they were like cockroaches, they were just everywhere. And uh, you rented quite a few of them and streamed them before SCR, and uh, yeah. I mean, it's one thing to make a game for like a very popular console that isn't as powerful as the others that were out on the market. Which, with all with all the games we mentioned before, were developers that obviously made good use of of both the graphical limitations of the Wii and its hardware. But with the shovelware, it was just, it was really just people just throwing stuff out there and hope people and hope gullible mothers would buy them. It, it was pretty <laughs> disheartening. Yeah, you couldn't even say it's like the beginning of the Wii's downfall. I wouldn't say it was really a downfall. I mean, well, I guess, I guess it just depends on how you look at it. I mean, if you, I mean, chances are, if you have a Wii and you're gamers like us, then you obviously have the big name titles and and other good quality games for it. I mean, you're people are not gonna. I imagine people wouldn't get a Wii just for like Ninja Bread Man. Yeah. I imagine, I imagine the shovelware titles are just like, it's like if people just get it for like Wii Sports or Wii Fit, which it wouldn't surprise me if people were, were, were really just like that, if they just got it just for like those. And if they just see these like cheap games, they're just like, oh whatever, just get this. But that that's the thing though, yeah, I mean, the casual market definitely was kind of a bit hindering for the Wii, but I wouldn't say it exactly detract completely from, like, the obviously the good games that we mentioned before. Yeah, fair enough. Not to mention the the fact that you can actually download all the games on the vir a whole bunch of games on the virtual console, which, which I still tend to do now and then for games that are, like, kind of hard to come by physical copies of. Like uh, Wild Guns, that's that's a game I forgot to mention in my uh, Pet Cops. Uh, Wild Guns for the Super Nintendo, that game is really expensive, but on the on the Wii's uh, virtual uh, console, it's just eight bucks. So it was it was a great way to like bring back a lot of those like classics. I'm gonna make a note of that. Note of what? That that's on the virtual console. Yeah. I might have to get that a little later. Mm -hmm. But other than me adding to my list of crap to buy, any other things to say about the Wii before we wrap this up? Uh, good console despite its somewhat uh, oversaturated casual market. I'd say it had hits and misses, but it was still a, de a decent console first time, and well, I, I do have some fond memories. I still say it's mostly 
hit if you just don't get the silverware, which chances are you'll avoid anyway. Yeah. True that. Last thing I'll say is, I know people crapped on it because of the like not-so-powerful hardware, but if you look at the influence that it's had, what is Microsoft trying really hard to push right now with, with their current system and their new system? Yeah, not to mention Sony with their uh, PlayStation Move. Oh, but they never really cared about that. <laughs> well, in theory, okay. they cared, but... Well, it was still... No, no, they didn't. It was still pretty blatant. It's like, okay, we need the casual market. We need their casual market. I know, let's just do what they did, but with us. At least, at least they stopped, unlike a certain other company. Hmm. Sony knew when to stop. And on that note, why don't we go ahead and go into... your questions. Okay, good, because I thought you just turned into an airplane there for a second. Oh, I did. Oh, of course. Silly me. I, I do that from time to time. I'm Not talking with the doctor about how to get it under control. But anyway, but anyway... So you're a Transformer. Sort of. <laughs> it really hurts to turn into a plane, by the way. Uh, yeah, I could imagine, since you're not mechanical. But anyway, our question is from... Go go! And he asked, Which company would you want to develop a new title in your favorite video game series? If the owner of that series were to outsource it. Hmm. That's an interesting question because a lot of the times when you outsource a game, it could be a risky business. Especially yeah. when it's like a game with one of your favorite games or games that has a, a substantial fan following. Cough, cough, double may cry, cough. But, uh. Hmm. Game cough, set? Cough, box, cough. <laughs> Um, this might be a hard one to think of, because a lot of the games I know of that I'd like to have have already been outsourced to people, and I liked for the, and I have some I liked for the most part, like Silent Hill and Rock Knight and uh, Spider House. Um, Should I just go ahead? Yeah, you might as well while the rest of us think. Yeah, I admit I cheated a little and did some research on this before. Well, obviously, one of my favorite game series is Bloody Roar, and obviously, Hudson Soft doesn't exactly exist anymore. Although, I'll have to check if Aiding and Rising still do. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, I think I yeah, Aiding is doing mobile shit now, though. Yeah, after Castlevania Judgment, yeah. or 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 Marvel vs. Capcom three, I think they did too, actually. But since I'm pretty sure Konami still has the rights to it, and they're not going to do a damn thing with it anytime soon, uh, I looked into it a little bit, and I came up with a couple possibilities. One of which is going to sound almost blasphemous to say, but Capcom? And there is a reason that I say this. And it's because Capcom has worked on other fighting game series that I think could adapt well to the Bloody War formula. Uh, way back when they did like the Capcom vs. SNK games. I know that's a 2D fighter, Bloody Wars 3D, but Capcom also did the Rival Schools games. And those had like 3D implementation methods with them. So that's why I think that could work. But it wouldn't work because Capcom would then probably outsource it to somebody else. So moving on. Yeah, we all know how good they out we all know how good the companies they outsource their games to. And this is another uh, thing that I probably don't think would happen, but that I think could work. And that's uh, Sega Am 2. Uh, sorry, what, what game? No, the company, Sega Am 2. Oh. If that doesn't sound familiar, uh, some of the stuff that they've done, well, they still do, the Virtua Fighter series. Yeah, they technically don't exist on their own anymore, but they are like a little block of Sega that still manages to like keep its identity and still put out games now and then. So 
I think that's a definite possibility. Actually, speaking of Sega, there's one series that I would like to see come back and uh, made by uh, someone. And that would be the Streets of Rage games. No, I was I was thinking who could maybe make a, a new modern Streets of Rage and not have it end up being like Final Fight Streetwise. Um, maybe someone like Platinum. Because, uh, and maybe if they do it in a style similar to uh, Anarchy Reigns, I could maybe see that work. Yeah, I guess it could. Like, granted, not be as insane as Anarchy Reigns was, but just be a bit more street brawlish. Um, I also want to say, like, even though Earthworm Jim did come back in an HD version that uh, was made by. Game Loft, I think, but Game Loft mostly just does mobile stuff, so I don't know if they would be able to make a, a brand new Earthworm Jim game, but I would, I would like to see, like, Earthworm Jim come back from somebody. Uh, I think Interplay still... I'm, I'm still... I'm a little confused as, as, as whether Interplay is even still around or not, that they even still are in Earthworm Jim or whatever, but... I'm just trying to think of who would be a good developer that's worked on 2D platformers or something like that that would probably work for like a new Earthworm Jim game. Well, oh, maybe someone like uh, Way Forward. And if they keep it like sprite based or or 2D based, then yeah. I'm not sure how I could answer this question since a lot of my favorite series is. Uh are still technically owned by, uh, by their original, uh, creators. Well, do you have any, uh, games that you kind of wish would have a sequel to, and you think who might make want to make it? I can you throw know, out an idea. Uh, hmm? uh, I think I could just got one, though. Go ahead. Well, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> Alright, thank you. But, uh, I know the Jack and Daxter games have not seen the, the light of day for a while, ever since that, uh, Lost Frontier game, which was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. But, uh, if, if, uh, if they were to, to uh, outsource it to, uh, to actual competent t developers, let's hope, uh, maybe, I, I don't know who, maybe Insomniac, not too sure if they would be up for the task, but, uh, you know, I'd love to see Jack and Daxter come back in some sort of form and make it good. But that's just me. I'm not too sure if Naughty Dog still owns the, the series or not, though. Well, I think at this point it's it's Sony. Yeah. So, and since Naughty Dog is, you know, obviously doing doing uh, high-profile games like Last of Us, but you never know. Yeah. One idea I will throw out, and this can actually apply to two games, which technically there's still uh, games being made for them, but one is uh, Seiken Densetsu, and the other is Breath of Fire. I want to see what would happen if uh, either one of those titles were given to someone like Level 5. So I... I think that's about it, would you say? That's all I can think of. Yeah. Okay, well, if anyone has questions that they want to be answered on the podcast, they can be asked in the comments section of the post on the website or on the YouTube upload. You can also ask us via private message or in the comments section on Facebook, facebook.com slash rivercitygamers. But in the meantime... Let's do some video updates, and we'll start with... Nightman. Alright. Well... Well, the Tokyvision's in the works, so... That'll, I, I hope to have that up before, uh, before the next weekend. But let, we'll, we'll see. And, like I said earlier... I, I might review Dust because I'm really enjoying that game, and I, I guess I'd like to make a video about that, so... That's all that I got. Moving on. Okay, I'll go next. 
And uh, I have made a little progress on the Bloody Roar Retrospective for Primal Fury slash Extreme. And um, I know I've already given reasons for why it's taking so long, but I have a new reason which um, has to do with the amount of work that's being put into this. Now, I had some downtime at work, and for those of you who don't uh, know, I work in a computer lab. So I'm allowed to go on the internet and bullshit around while I'm not doing anything. Within reason. So, I spent... Yeah, this past week I spent about three and a half to four hours of my time at work looking up individuals from the credits listing of Bloody Roar Primal Fury and basically doing background checks on all of them. So that's the kind of work that I'm putting into this. Beyond just looking up a Wikipedia page, recording some game footage, and then going from there. And beyond the Bloody Roar retrospective, I have a massive laundry list of games that I can do for SC on when I get back into that, or $5 gaming, too. But right now, I'm still 100% focused on the retrospective, so that's where I stand. Okay, I guess that just leaves me, then. Uh, not much has really been going on with me. Um, I still haven't gotten around to uh, fixing the few little issues I've been having. Or a few minor issues. Though, for the next They Me sequel, I decided to... I was originally going to do one game, but I decided to do it. going to decide to do another. And I still have yet to get that game come in the mail, because I ordered it off of eBay. Uh, but in the meantime, I can still record footage of the first game. And then, uh... And then eventually record that game for the next They Me sequel. Because, uh, late... And lately I've been, uh... I've been working, but but now that that's over, I'll have more free time to come back to my videos, and uh, and once I do that, and of course I just got a new console, so that will probably sap into my time as well. But uh, but in the meantime, yeah, it, uh, I'm still on a bit of a short break, I guess you could say, but I should get back into uh, making videos soon. All right, and on that note, we have reached the end of the podcast. I am SCXCR. I'm Blonga Gamer. And I'm Nightman39. I really need to organize these stacks of games. I'll say. I have stacks, too. Games. Games everywhere. But no time to play. There is no time. Your games are enough. What Oops. time is it? It's game time. Oh. Just don't get buried in all your games. Barry Burton? Yeah, sure. Speaking of ESPN... Good, my football team is still winning. Okay, is that relevant for this podcast or are you... Not at all.